Hello class, today we are going to talk about transformations. No, not that. But transformations, what this is, this is a function that moves or changes a figure to produce a new figure. Again, no, not that. Uh, what we're looking at here, we are looking at translations, reflections, rotations, and dilations. Now, that's a lot of stuff. We're not going to talk about all of that today. What we're going to talk about today is just going to be the translations. Okay. Now, what a translation is, this is something that maps the points of a figure along a vector. Now, the question here is, of course, what is a vector? It's a mathematical term, a quantity represented by an arrow with both direction and magnitude. Yes, thank you. Okay, so as you said, it is represented by an arrow with direction and magnitude. So for example, an arrow like this, vectors are generally drawn from the origin. We have an arrow, it looks like a ray, right? But it's not, because a vector has, not only does it have this direction, it also has magnitude, that means distance, okay? How long is the vector? This shows that we're starting at the origin and we're going this far in this direction and then we are stopping. The arrow is not like a ray which says we're going on forever, it's saying this is the direction you go, okay? So this vector, you can write this in component form, which looks like this. All right, notice this looks a lot like an ordered pair. That's because we go to the right five. So on a coordinate grid to the right, that's a positive number. And we're going down three. So that would be a negative number, negative three. This is in the same order as an ordered pair, the X movement and then the Y movement. Notice, however, unlike an ordered pair, it has these angled brackets. It does not have parentheses. Again, that's to show that it's a vector, not an ordered pair. Okay, vector's got two parts. It's got the initial point where it starts, also called the tail, and it has the terminal point where it ends, called the head. So heads and tails, and we have the, or the initial point and terminal point, whichever one you want to call it. So what we're going to do when it says we're going to map the points along a vector, that means we're going to take this vector and we're going to apply it to each of these points. And right now we're just going to apply it to the vertices, like so, and then it will map the points. So it will move, that's what map means, move the points along this vector to here. All right. And one thing I do want to point out, notice that each of these points moves to the same vector. All right. Not just the vertices, but even the points in between the vertices all move according to this vector. They all move the same distance in the same direction. All right. So that's the same thing that I have here in purple. It moves every point the same distance in the same direction. All right, translation. Now, we have two images. And I move point A over here to this other point, right? I need to call this point something. I can't call it A because this is A, so this can't be A. Well, we're going to call these instead of being A, B, and C, we are going to call these A with a little apostrophe here. That's read as A prime. So we have A prime, we have B prime, and we have C prime. No, not him. Anyways, so anyhow, A maps to A prime, B maps to B prime, C maps to C prime. Okay, so now we have two shapes. We have the original and the new one. One of these is called the image. Take a guess which one that is. The image is the new one, not the old one. The original is called the pre-image. The new one is called the image. The image is, this shape is the image of what came first, okay? The new one is the image. The original is the pre-image. Now, notice these points, okay? These are the coordinates for A, B, and C, and A prime, B prime, and C prime. And in each case, you'll notice that all we do is we apply that vector. We're just going to add the vector each time. Our vector was 5, negative 3, 7 plus 5, 12, 9 minus 3, 6, 6 plus 5, 11, 4 plus negative 3, 1, 10 plus 5, 15, 4 plus negative 3, 1. So 
we can do this very simply without even having the coordinate grid. We don't need to draw the vector on there or anything like that. We just need to know what is the vector, how am I moving this pre-image, and you just have to add it to the points. All you have to do. Very, very simple. All right. Okay, so in this one, we want to find the image of the point negative seven zero after a translation left four units and up one unit. And we are going to do this with no graph at all. We're just going to work this out. So I'm going to write down my point, negative 7 and 0. And then I'm going to write down my translation, the vector here, which is left 4 units. So if I'm going to the left, that would be negative 4 and up 1, so plus 1. And I'm just going to add this up. So negative 11 and 1, and that is my answer, negative 11, 1. All right. Super simple. All right. In the next example, right here, this tells us the image of point A after a translation left four units and down one is the point B, negative two, negative four. Determine the coordinates of the pre-image point A. So notice the image of point A is what they gave us. This is the image. We want to find the pre-image. Okay. So what that means is we have some x and some y, and we added in the vector, which was left four units and down one unit, so down one, and that gave us negative two, negative four. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this backwards, okay? So something minus four equals negative two. Okay, well, that's easy enough. That would just go backwards. Negative two plus four would be positive two. Something minus 1 equals negative 4, so we just go backwards. Negative 4 plus 1 equals negative 3. Put my parentheses around it, and this is my pre-image. All right. This is the image. This is the pre-image. Remember, pre-image comes first, image comes second. Um, I don't really like this here. It should be called it. This is A, and this is, would be A prime. All right, this is the image and the pre-image. All right, so just to recap, translations, it maps a figure along a vector, so it just slides it over. Doesn't turn it or anything like that, just slides it over. It's also called a slide. The pre-image comes first, the image comes second, and all you have to do is just take your vector and you add it to the pre-image, and that will give you the image. So it's really very, very simple. And there it is. Hope you found that useful. And I will see you in the next video.